our families, and for the conversion of sinners. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, develop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to St. Patrick Catholic Church. Our celebrant for this Mass is our pastor, Father Ziegler. Please join in the opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had heard at which such as they had not heard of from the old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways, Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall. Once again, O Lord of hosts, 
look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more be drawn from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Of course, we begin a new liturgical season, and as and as you know, is a preparation, uh, certainly for the coming of Christ, uh, which we commemorate in the Nativity of the Lord, this wondrous event of the birth of our Savior. But also, we look forward to the end when Christ will come again. So our Advent really needs to be ongoing; it shouldn't just be for weeks or so, but we should really live in a continual state of readiness, 
day by day. The best way to be vigilant is to pray, of course. The chief prayer among all is the most perfect prayer, the most sublime, the prayer which is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So this is why during these four Sundays, Father Shear and myself will be speaking on, during the homily, will be speaking on the sacred liturgy and its importance. To begin with, what do we mean by the word liturgy? We've all heard it. We commonly refer to it as our worship of God at Holy Mass, and, and that is correct. Liturgy is most properly speaking the celebration of the Most Holy Eucharist, but it, it is more than that. The word liturgy comes, well, liturgia, which the Latin, but it comes from the Greek, which really means a work, a public work, or a service in the name of or on behalf of the people. And so in Christian tradition, what it really means is the participation of the people in the Opus Dei, the work of God. So liturgy is the public worship of the church. Second Vatican Council taught us that the liturgy is the summit toward which the activity of the church is directed. And we consider the liturgy primarily in three ways. Yes, the offering of the holy sacrifice of the mass, but also the celebration of the other sacraments, and then also the celebration of the divine office, what is also called the liturgy of the hours. Celebration, of course, of the Holy Eucharist is chief among these. It is the worship of God par excellence because it is Jesus offering himself to the Heavenly Father on our behalf. And his body, blood, soul, and divinity become truly present when we receive them also as our sacred meal. But the liturgy is above all the sacrifice of Christ to the eternal Father. Here we come into contact with the Lord God, the transcendent God. And we're really participating in our own redemption. Can there be anything really more important to us than that? And yet, when we consider even, you know, pre-pandemic times, you know, the uh, people, according to polls, who practice their faith weekly, attending Mass every Sunday, is something like only 30 percent. You know, some decades ago when it was 70 percent, that was like a big crisis. Where are those other 30 percent? Now it's 70 percent that aren't coming regularly. Well, they say, a lot of things, I suppose. They say they're too busy, but we're all busy. So that's a pretty lame excuse. Uh, they might say, well, you know, it's, it's the same thing every week. Yeah, but think about it. You do a lot of the same things every, every week, every day. You eat, you sleep, you get up to go to work, you get up to go to school. Well, some say, well, it's too boring. You know, it's too irrelevant. Well, <laughs> Okay, maybe the priest is boring, but Jesus can never be boring. He can never be irrelevant. And, and this is what we do. We come to offer our own prayers in union with Christ to the Heavenly Father. Second uh, Vatican Council has brought a number of fruits and blessings to the people. But even so, uh, there's been a number of uh, things that have happened over the course of decades, where people, or especially priests, you know, try to make the Mass more relevant, or maybe even more entertaining, and they end up trivializing what is a holy. It is a sacrifice of Calvary made present in our very midst. There can really be nothing more relevant than that. The liturgy belongs to the church. The church alone regulates the manner in which the sacred liturgy is celebrated. Again, a number of important changes have occurred since the Second Vatican Council, chiefly allowing uh, for the Mass to be celebrated in the vernacular, in the people's own language, 
whatever language that might be. Uh, where, and that includes the, the divine office, the priest's prayer and the nun's prayer, and the lady invited to pray it as well. But allows this to be done in the vernacular, whereas previously uh, the entirety of the Mass was offered in Latin, including even the readings. There is a permission for them to be read at the beginning of the homily in the vernacular, but it's not required. And then, as you are aware, a blessing uh, in the Second Vatican Council liturgy is to have a, you know, a three-year cycle of readings at Sunday Mass to allow for greater variation and a richer source of uh, the Word of God from sacred scripture uh, for the people's benefit whereas in the traditional Mass, uh, there's only one year cycle, so the readings are read uh, every year, every Sunday the same as the previous year. And so there are also other blessings, but these are some of the chief ones. But uh, despite these blessings, there are a number of also, um, you could say, even abuses that have taken place and corrections uh, needed to be made. And then and it comes from, again, the authority of the church. St. John Paul II had to address, for instance, the tendencies of secularizing the clergy and uh, clericalizing the laity, for instance, where lay persons were called forward to distribute Holy Communion when there was not really a need to do so. And there were ordinary members of the clergy available to do so. And he called reprehensible the fact that some priest might be sitting over in the rectory drinking coffee and allowing uh, lay people to be distributing Holy Communion. Here we're blessed to, to have two priests and even five deacons. Another example you're probably well aware of because it happened not too long ago was that the church mandated that there be a new authentic translation of the missal that is used at Mass because the previous one, uh, the one that particularly in English, was an imprecise translation from the original Latin. And, uh, and the prayers which the people of God were listening to in many cases were robbed of uh, their, uh, maybe say, splendor and uh, eloquence. And so uh, this was done as well. Sometimes changes were made without any mandate. Perhaps you may have heard of mass being uh, celebrated ad orientem. It means literally toward the east. That means at the time of the offertory, the priest faces the altar instead of facing the people, or what's called ad populum, toward the people. The ad orientem, toward the east, Posture was a practice that really dated to the earliest centuries of the church right up until modern times. And churches were nearly always constructed uh, facing the east. Why? Well, it symbolized the movement of the people and the priests toward the east, that is, toward the rising sun, foreshadowing the coming again of Christ. This is known even in the Old Testament times. Prophet Ezekiel said, Then he led me to the gate facing east, and there was the glory of the God of Israel coming from the east. Or even Jesus himself says in the Gospel of St. Matthew, Just as lightning comes from the east, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. But, Father, didn't Vatican II require that the priest face the people during the Mass? Actually, no, it did not. It allowed for it. But according to the official rules called the rubrics, that is liturgical law that is contained right in the Missal itself, the presumption is to the contrary, that the priest from the time of the offertory until after uh, distribution of the Holy Communion is facing toward the altar because there are some directives given to the priest to face the people, for instance, at the prayer. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable. And another time, it says, the priest faces the people and says, behold the Lamb of God, behold him, implying that he wasn't already facing them before. It would be redundant to tell him to do so if you were facing the people already. But is this posture really important? Actually, yes. There's an ancient maxim of the church called lex orande, lex credende. It means the law of prayer is the law of belief. And what that means is the way we pray has a deep relation to the way we believe. The Mass is not fundamentally about me. It's not fundamentally about you. We participate in the Mass, but it is the eternal offering of the Son, Jesus Christ, to the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. What can and does happen when the priest celebrates Mass facing the people is that there can be a depreciation of what is essential in its meaning. The Mass is not meant to be a performance, but the reality is when the priest faces the people, in a sense, he becomes the center of attention. His personality is on display. That's not what our focus should be on. Even if the priest tries to minimize this outcome, say by prayerfully adoring the sacred host before him or looking at the crucifix, it cannot really be eliminated from the people's view. So his own personality, his quirks, facial expressions, what have you, can tend and do so, attempt to obscure the transcendent reality of what is taking place. How important is that? Well, in the words of Pope Emeritus, Benedict XVI, as he said in his book, The Spirit of the Liturgy, a common turning to the East during the Eucharistic prayer remains essential. This is not, he said, a case of accidentals, but of essentials. Looking at the priest, he says, has no importance. What matters is looking together at the Lord. In other words, there is at Mass a proper time for the priest to face the people. Now, for instance, or during the uh, opening rites of the Mass, confidier and so on, the opening prayer, which are normally done from the chair, presider's chair. But then there's a time when the dialogue is proper with the priest and people praying to God together. Especially we remember this then, the importance of liturgy, which is really uh, Christ coming into our midst. So the priest united with the people enter into this sacred and transcendent reality. Let's remember then the central purpose of the Mass. Jesus is making on our behalf his offering to the Eternal Father for our salvation. He died for us. He rose again. He has given us every means to be able to join him in the life to come. We remember this especially in Advent, for we know that Christ will come again. But he's already with us here and now in the sacred liturgy, especially in the offering of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So let this Advent, let this be our focus, and let it remain so even as the days of Advent pass. May our God be praised. Now I have the blessing of our Advent wreath. Christ came to bring us salvation and has promised to come again. Let us pray that we may be always ready to welcome him and that the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love and that the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath, and may their light reflect the splendor of Christ to his Lord forever and ever.
Let's stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and then will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the church on earth to effectively prepare the entire world for the final advent of the Son of Man and for the peace that his kingdom brings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our governing, governing representatives to find instruction in the word of God and work tirelessly for that true justice which is the foundation of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians to be committed to prepare the way of the Lord by fostering a consistent respect for human life, especially the vulnerable, unborn, and marginalized. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the sick, especially those from our parish family, that they may put on the Lord Jesus Christ, facing every trial with faith in him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peaceful repose of Edward M. Lerner, that the particular attention for which this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have died, that the Lord who comes to conquer death may grant them forgiveness of sins and a share of his eternal joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To these we add your own personal intentions. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below 
gained for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, 
to all who are pleasing to you through passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only the word of my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot receive Jesus in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist at this time, we offer you this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
restore his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Let us pray. May these mysteries of the Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael, we are an angel. Defend us from the devil. We are protection against the wickedness and spirits of the devil. May God.